So somebody asked the question, so how did this thing go wrong? And I think that it's important that I'm able to share with you my own simple thoughts on what I believe that the Nigerian now let me quickly just say something. Please hear me and take this in your heart. Are you ready? Anything that is constant cannot determine a result. Anything that is constant cannot determine a result. So, for instance, these pillars are constant. You therefore cannot blame the pillar for not seeing the slide. Because you cannot move the pillar and you cannot move the screen. But you can move. Does that make sense? Yes, so only the things that are variable are the things you must focus on to change any result that you are looking for. Anything you cannot change, don't worry about it. Only focus on the things you can change. So I am going to be here and I'm challenging anybody who cannot see clearly. Look, the whole hall is filled with empty seats. No, that's not, that's not filled with empty seats. <laughs> but there are empty seats all over the place, right? If you want, see, there are three chairs here in front. If you cannot see, relocate yourself to the front. If you want, come and take my chair here. Anybody that cannot see, anybody, don't, if you can see, don't stand up. <laughs> anybody that cannot see from where they are, See, I have chairs. <laughs> I was, I, I wonder whether I can stand here. Right? But listen to me. Don't use, hear me please. Don't let anything cause you to give an excuse in life. An excuse is a good reason for a bad result. You understand what I'm saying? How can you leave your house on a Sunday afternoon, many of you have not even had lunch, and you come here at a great cost, then you sit down there and you allow a pillar to block you. <laughs> question and answer. Now, for as many of you as have questions, I hear the best way to do this is for you to please write your questions down on any sheet of paper if you can get one. And if you don't have one, then maybe we'll get the opportunity to get the microphone across to you, or you'll come out. But the most important thing is, please note your questions somewhere, so that you don't forget them. Now, let's be clear. The hardest question, the hardest questions are any questions that we believe we may have an answer to or we may not have an answer to. I'm not here to tell you that ah, Felagi Otoe has every answer that you can ever imagine. No. And I don't even think that anybody that is running or aspiring to, to lead a nation must have all the answers. I believe that anybody who is going to lead a nation is not somebody who must know everything, but you must have the ability to know the people who know what it is that they need to do. And more importantly, you must have the humility to be able to listen to them. And I think wow. that one of the greatest challenges that experience gives to people who believe they have experience in political leadership or running nations is that after some time you believe you know it all. So even though times have changed, you are still saying, ah, well, 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 we've done this thing before now, what's the big deal? One of the most important things that I believe is that the people who don't have experience come with one great asset. It's called the humility of learning. The desire to learn. And that is one of the things that I carry with me. Anybody who, who wants it, so I don't have to have the answer to your question. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. Two things we can do. I can go and learn it. I can call somebody who knows the answer, and they'll give it to you. And if somebody knows the answer in this room, they'll give it to all of us. The most important thing is that a co as a collective, we must be able to leverage our strengths. Every human being has strengths, and every human being has weaknesses. What great leaders do is strengthen their strengths and then find people who have strengths in the areas of their weakness. And that is how they collaborate together. So, just to let you know, 
Any question you would like to ask, please feel free and confident to ask. The day I saw this slide, I almost burst into tears. Because it occurred to me exactly what kind of nation it is that we are. I don't know when you look at this slide. Yes, you know, sorry, you can hide behind the pillar. Yeah, so we can, we can, that, we can move him, Abi. Okay, are you here with me? So when you look at when you look at this slide, which one do you think is Nigeria? Is it this one or this one? The one on the right or the one on the left? Yes. The one on the left. Yes. And I agree totally with you. I believe that this nation is is like one of those nations that is a paradox. We are such a blessed nation, but today when you look at Nigeria, we have very little to show for it. Because you can't understand how a nation that is at one time the sixth highest producer of crude oil can become an importer of, of petrol and diesel. How can a nation of 190 million people have so much unemployment whereas we can be the production capital of the world when you look at where we are located right in the center of the world map? How does a nation that is the largest black market in the world not be able to be the largest black producer of things? In the year that I was born, 1971, 10 years after that video that we watched, 10 years after, one Nigerian pound exchanged for three US dollars. Meaning you needed $300 to buy 100 Nigerian pounds in 1971. By the time I was five years old in 1976, you still needed $133 to buy 100 Naira. But something happened. Somebody say with me, something happened. <laughs> Within 30 years, by 2006, one dollar is now exchanging for 133 naira. And within 10 years from that point, $331 Naira is being exchanged for $1. Now, listen to me. We can ask ourselves different kinds of questions. But the most important question we need to ask ourselves is, by 2026, what will $1 exchange for in Naira? One thing I can tell you is that it is the people who accept responsibility for the exchange rates that will determine the exchange rate. The exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar by 2026 can either be left to people who are going to say, okay, Sarah, Sarah. what will be with me? At this rate, hmm, maybe it will be a thousand to one. But those are the relics of a wasted generation. Because a great generation are the people who accept responsibility to build their nation and be able to hand over a better nation to the next generation. Does somebody understand where I'm coming from? But it is not enough for you to accept. You must believe in what you accept and you want to deliver. And then you have to commit yourself to it. And then you must do everything you can to deliver it. Because those are the four things that make up the guys who will build the nation that they will hand to their children. Let me say something very quickly. Nations are like houses. They are built. And yes, houses are built by, by masons, plumbers, and all of these kind of things, tilers. Nations are built by nation builders. 
But nation builders are the people who have those four characteristics I just gave to you. A, B, C, D. Somebody say A. Amen. Nation builders accept responsibility for the nation that they will live in and the one they will give to their children. They accept responsibility for the well-being of that nation. Meaning that a nation builder says, if my nation is not doing well, no matter how well I'm doing, I'm not doing well enough. A nation builder is not happy to buy a jeep so that he can fly over a bad road. A nation builder wants the road fixed. Yes, sir. A nation builder is not happy simply because his house is shaking from the powerful generator, even though his neighbors don't have lights. Nation builders are people who will say, it is better that we have collective success than for me to have individual success in the midst of collective failure. Wow. Nation builders understand that the ordinary citizens of great nations will forever be treated better than, than successful citizens of failed states. Mm. So it is in the interest of a nation builder that everybody is okay, not just me. So you ask a question, how did we get to where we are today, where we have so much blessing and yet so little to show for it? Ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, and I know some of you may not be able to see what is written there, so I will say it to you, I'll read it to you. It says, I'm sure glad the whole isn't at our end. Sorry, does that make sense? Does it matter whose end the hole is at? We said the boat has a hole. The boat is about to do. See, you are saying that it is not at your end. And this is exactly what it is that happened to our nation. We went from a me genera uh, a we generation. People who fought for the collective freedom and liberation of a whole generation to a me generation who started to think that if I have a generator, it doesn't matter whether there's power. Let the people that are struggling, let them struggle. It doesn't matter whether the quality of education is going down. If me, I can at least steal enough to be able to make sure that my children can go to schools abroad. Then, do I care? Does it matter whether our health care is failing and people are dying in hospitals? As long as I can at least get on the plane and fly abroad. You said it. This is what killed our nation. People who began to lead and rule that had no compassion for others. People who were looking out for themselves alone. People who wanted to be better than others rather than get all of us to be better as a, as a people. This, my people, is what killed our nation. When people started looking for jobs rather than looking for how to grow our economy so that there's jobs for everybody. This is what killed our nation. And so in my own opinion, over time, a group of people started to rule. And by the time they started to rule us, don't forget, they interrupted them Tapao Balewa. Them Tapao Balewa did not hand over. They did not groom these guys. Those guys came in and snatched the button from the guys who had worked hard for the liberation of this country. Mm. And somehow, whether you believe it or not, that button is still in their hand. They were young when they snatched the button. Today, they have become old. But one of the things that they've done over the many years, almost 55 or 57, 55 out of, of the years that we have been together as a nation, is they've been able to convince us. Please, can anybody tell me what will happen if this horse was to sneeze? What do you think will happen to this chair? I'm sorry? So somebody, just this one, this time, only two people. Somebody has to tell me what they see when they look at this. I'm coming to you. Just somebody raise your hand. I'll come to you. Okay, there are two people on that side. I'll go to them very quickly. 
I just want to know what does this picture show say to you? Now I see the otters majority, that's the youth, the greater population. Uh -huh. Then I see the cedars, those leaders holding us down. Uh -huh. Holding down the new Nigeria. And if only the youth would just try. Yeah. So yeah. what do you think is going to happen to that? Yeah. 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 I, I see much more of the mental thing. Okay, the mental state whereby we believe that we cannot be liberated from this particular thing. But you see the bundle of force that the horse carries. If it just sneezes, I'm very quite sure that that chair will fly away. You will see it again for those who are 96 million people were above the age of 18. 68 million of them went as far as getting their temporary voter's card. And only 28 million votes were cast. I didn't say voters. So. You know the difference between votes and voters? Well, because you know that there was multiple voting. AKA yes. On both sides. And so, even if we assumed that every vote was cast by a bona fide voter, 28 million votes out of 68 million possible voters means that 14 million people who went as far as getting their temporary voters card did not vote. That's this first. Then another 30 million did not even bother to go and get their voters card. Why do you think they did not do so? Somebody tell me, what, do, what did the people want? What were they saying to themselves? Our votes will not count. Our votes will not count. Eh? It won't change anything. They will not let us. It is predetermined. You are not talking to me now. They know themselves. They know themselves. The people that we get there, we get there. They have already, this is, they have already written the results before we go to the ballot board. Eh? Which other one? Nana Jawi says. Nana Jawi says. He's a regime. There's somebody on the south saying. Now, what they have done is the people who want to keep us down are extremely excited every time we say these things. Because they know that as long as we keep saying it, we will not go and get our PVC. They know that as long as we keep saying it, we will not even bother to go out on election day. That we will sit down on, the, on our sofa chairs, running generator to watch Channel TV. <laughs> Or TBC, so that they will now be tweeting, forgetting that INEC does not count tweets. <laughs> yeah. INEC only counts votes. But then they say, there is no need for me to go and vote. Why? Because my vote will not count. And I always agree with them that you see, as long as you don't cast your vote, it cannot count. And for sure, if you don't have a PVC, your vote cannot count because you don't even have a vote. Because your PVC is not just your permanent voter's card. It is the power to vote your choice. So as long as you don't have a voter's card, you really don't have a choice. You only have an idea. And your idea is not worth listening to because in any case, your idea cannot be brought forth. What most people do not realize is that you are not voting for your generation. You are voting for the next generation. Every time you stand to vote, you are voting for a future that you want to live in and you want your children to live in. So whether you have had children or not, your children are in your lungs. And they are the ones that are there asking a very simple question. What kind of future are you going to make sure that we have? I said something this morning at the CLC. I said there is going to come a day that you can no longer afford to lie to yourself. And on that day, 
Your children are going to ask you two questions. Question number one. How did we get here? You heard somebody today stand, look back at the, sound, at, at, the, at the sands of time and ask, how did we get from that place to this place? Well, your children are going to look back and they're going to ask you, how did we get here? But question number two that your children are also going to ask, they're going to ask a very simple question. What did you do? Now, you see, when they ask you what you did, you can no longer talk about what they allowed you or what day. Your children are no longer talking about they. They are talking about you. Your children are going to be going through your tweets because the internet does not forget. Your children are going to be looking at your posts on Facebook. Your children are going to be seeing how instead of going to get your voter's car, you are there talking about how difficult it is that Pinek has made it. And then your children are either going to hail you or they will hiss on you. But by the grace of God, they will not hiss on you. Amen. Because it is only a wasted generation that commands a hiss. A great generation commands applause. That's why they are called knowledge. Does so somebody understand what I'm saying? We will build a new Nigeria. And there are enough people that want that new Nigeria. So I want you to be a part of those that will build it. But even if you decide that you will not be a part of them, we will still build this new Nigeria. Yes, sir. We will. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, Is there anybody here that knows that, look, I, I, I don't just want a new Nigeria. I am determined to deliver a new Nigeria. Let me see your hands. Say it with me, we will have a new Nigeria. We will have a new Nigeria. This one is Dole. As I was saying, it's, it's by force. We must have a new Nigeria. We cannot continue like this. Yes. How many people are tired of this nonsense that we are seeing every day? <laughs> so the question is, what are you willing to do about it? Tired as you are, listen to me. The people that are holding us bound are hoping that you are too tired to stand up to do anything. That's what they are hoping to do. They are hoping that you cannot join a political party. Because you believe that all parties are useless. They are hoping that you will not go and get your PVC. Because you believe that your vote will not count. They are hoping that if they make it difficult for you to get your PVC, you will turn back and go home. That's what they are hoping. But I have come for a very simple purpose. Are you ready? Are you ready? Sorry, I know you are looking. Are you ready? I want to ask a very simple question. What do you see? But wait, oh. Wait now. Uh -uh. Are you ready? Yes. Ilori, are you ready? Yeah. When I ask what do you see, one, two, three, go. You will tell me what you see together as a United States. United States of Kwa. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. What do you see? Yes. So I said we have to do it together. Some people on this side did not do it. Let's go. Listen, I'm relying on all of you. One, two, three, go. What do we see? Yes. 